welcome to the JPEG Podcast. I'm Greg. I'm Jerry. And uh, we're here on March 15th. Episode 003. Yep. Three down. No, two down. This will be the third. This will be the third. <laughs> welcome. It's just us two today, as opposed to last week. It is just us two. We do not have a guest today. I mean, you can call Eduardo our guest if you wanted to. But if he comes in, yeah, if he came in, hopefully not, hopefully not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get to it. Let's get to it. Cool. So Roku for a while now has been having their stuff integrated into TVs, right? Specifically, a brand called TCL, which is I assume Chinese. Otherwise, I haven't heard of them. Okay, but they're finally offering 4K TVs. Ooh, because the Roku Four. I'm assuming because the Roku 4 is capable of 4K now. Right. Crispy 4K. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you like about your Roku? Because I still haven't gotten one myself. And and I've gotten my stepdad the, the Chromecast. And I know that they're completely different animals. I really like it because it seems to be vendor neutral. Like with Apple TV, nothing wrong. But... Mm-hmm. It works a lot better if you have other Apple stuff. Um, I really like that you can have open source channels, they call them, where people can just design them and you can install them, like sideload them okay. without going through the official store. Right. A lot of times you can get free TV that way. Hmm. And you can share your YouTube directly to it. Hey, yo. Which is what we use it a lot <laughs> for, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know you've gotten, like, what? Is this your, like, third version or your fourth version? Yeah, I've had three now. Three. I had the XS from, like, 2011, and it's really, really, really slow. Okay. So we moved the three that I had into our bedroom and got a new two, which is basically a three, without the headphones on the on the remote. Got it. Or, or, the, that... or the stupid Blockbuster button that's irrelevant. That's a cool... Oh, boy, that's right. <laughs> blockbuster is completely irrelevant. Do they have those... What are they like the those boxes that you can get the movies from? Kind of like Redbox. Redbox, yeah. I I feel like I've seen it before. I feel like Blockbuster used to have that, but then they got rid of it or something. And I I don't know. I feel like they've completely fallen off the face of the earth. It's kind of unfortunate. Blockbuster dot com right now. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Uh, Blockbuster. (laughs) Block. Does it even still have a website? Blockbuster Movies. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. So it must be all just digital now or something. It's got to be. They still have the same logo, though. That's really nostalgic. Got to keep it nostalgic. It reminds me of a Butterfingers for some, I guess, orange (laughs) orange and blue. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know? They really do have the same logo. Are you sure it's still open? Blockbuster LLC. Yeah. News PR. No, see, like, I don't know. This says Blockbuster name design and related. (laughs) 2014 Blockbuster LLC at the bottom of their page. Yeah, I'm looking at the the news PR section. Yeah. Blockbuster to end domestic retail DVD by mail services. So it's... they tried to do their own Netflix, it sounds like. Yeah. I'm I mean, not... this is January 2014, though. Yep. So Shows you how up-to-date we are, folks. <laughs> we keep it live and up-to-date. <laughs> <laughs> Just as an aside, if you can't tell, we do have a new microphone set up, and we're trying something new with this whole video. Yep. So, that's pretty cool. I, I'm i actually really proud of it. I'm stoked. This I, is awesome. Yeah. It's it's a step up from sharing a Yeti between each other and directly into the computer. So. Right. And nothing, I mean, nothing against Yeti. It's a definitely a great microphone, but you may be able to tell the difference if you listen back to this. I can already tell the difference Right. right now. Well, and it's really nice to hear your voice so nicely through here. Yeah. Oh, thank and I you. know it's really nice to hear my voice through those. That's so sweet. Yeah, your voice is all right. It's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, that's cool. Do you want a 4K TV? Do you I, see any? Hmm. I've seen... So, so there is like a Samsung 4K TV. I think it's like the curved one. Is that is mm. that Samsung? Probably. I don't know. I'm sure they have one. Might be Samsung or LG. I think it might be LG, but that that TV is gorgeous and it's so thin. It's like mm. unbelievable. Yeah. 
and it seems like everything like most tvs nowadays everything is kind of integrated into the tv but the menu options aren't as laggy for example like my vizio tv i can't stand my vizio tv at how laggy it is when i push just anything it just doesn't want to go yeah and, and i think they're like improving it obviously they'll get better as day goes on but that TV right now is probably like the best one you can get, but it's so expensive right now. It's probably ten thousand or something. Well, I mean, it's not like that expensive. But I've seen those though. They those are crazy. They're like eighty inch. Yeah, or whatever. I, I could never have that big of a TV unless I had like a dedicated <clears throat> theater room or something like that. Right, like this. So anyway, I don't think I don't see the need for four K TV right now because not yet nothing pushes it except for special Blu rays and things like that. Right. Right. And it's very expensive. Is it 4K 3D or not yet? There's no 3D anymore. Yeah. I mean, my TV does 3D. Mine does too. Yeah. Oh. Well, whatever. I mean, <laughs> I, mean it's I haven't taken out the Panasonic 3D <laughs> glasses in like three years, but I could if I wanted. I think it, mine came with like 15 or something pairs of glasses. A lot. But it, it, I, I've only opened two. <laughs> Were they the active ones or just like no, the no. old style? They're just the plastic, oh. like kind of, uh, you know, like it has kind of like a tinted mm-hmm. plastic lens to it as well. So I, I don't know. I, I had to charge mine. Oh, oh, yours. They were like active. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of cool. I, I haven't experienced that myself, but I don't know the difference. That's okay. But um, moving on to like another topic, I've been kind of getting into the whole vinyl scene lately and thank you shout out to brian my roommate blind shark (laughs) blind to shark he he has an amazing really cool new vinyl player and it's uh by this kind of smaller company i want to say but they they make these really simplistic vinyl players and it's it's like a belt driven player Hmm. so it takes kind of like this thin rubber wire if you will and and it turns the the dish Right. Forgive me. I have no platter? idea what the terms the terms are. Yeah, platter or something, whatever. And and the needle is really cool, but it's called U-turn. That's the company, and you can customize it. You can have like a see-through clear acrylic vinyl player if you want. It's really, just really, really neat. But it but it's it's all about minimalisticness. So on top of that, he's got a really awesome Bose surround sound system that just goes really nice. Bose. Bose. Um. Shout out again. Thank you for letting me use your headphones. U-turn. U-turn. Letter U. Gotcha. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you can customize it however you want. Um, and you can make it really expensive. I see what you mean. Or you can just make it pretty, you know, average. Um, but for the price, it's it's spot on because it's like what you expect or what you want to pay for a vinyl player. At least myself. But. What vinyls do you have? I actually got some really cool ones. I love Tron. Ariana Grande. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Tr- Tr- Troniana don't, Grande. Don't tell anyone. I won't. I promise. Okay. <laughs> no, but I have uh, I have Tron. Um, the sound, like the latest soundtrack? The latest movie. Um, I love that whole entire soundtrack. And it goes along with the movie, too, like each scene. Was, was that the one that uh, Daft Punk did? Yes, the okay. whole entire Daft Punk album. That's cool. It's epic, and it sounds really good on vinyl because it's just such a rich sound. Just kind of like I'm expecting you guys to hear with this new microphone setup. It's like a richer sound, and it's thicker and more analog. Thicker and, and creamier, like you said. Right. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. And then I got Interstellar. I haven't opened that one yet, but that sounds it's going to sound pretty epic. I just really like the big it's orchestra epic. trumpets, you know. It's epic anyway. Yeah. Like even on a cassette. Cassette? Cassette cassette yeah (laughs) it would be epic like it's crazy how much we took that stuff for granted back in the day you're just like my parents they have like stacks of cassette players you know sitting in the car they take up so much space when we first came to virginia Mm -hmm. uh, people left like boxes and boxes of vinyls oh really yeah wow and we were like whatever given my uncle that collects them but it would have been cool if i could like go back and look at them now yeah like what bands they were and right. what groups they were and things like that. I mean, because like Beatles vinyls and stuff, those are priceless almost. Mm. I mean, because and, and the thing about vinyl, which is kind of sad, is that every time you play it, it degrades a little bit, degrades it every single time. That sucks. It's, it gets less and less, I don't know, you know, 
pure right. and and what it originally was which is kind of sad but and and that's kind of what my dad mentioned too he he used to have a ton of vinyls but then over time he just told me that it just deteriorated which was sad you know that sucks um but it's crazy how they're making a comeback and i think people are not playing them as often as they used to because it's not the only medium out there but right you can you know if you're driving or yeah at work you can listen to the mp3 or whatever yeah but if you want like a, a little bit different experience you can... yeah while you're at home maybe while you have a party or something it's just a cool like vibe and it gives Sip you some wine right Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, like Kenny G, you know. Yeah, I, just get the mood right. Full disclosure, I love Kenny G. I do too. Man. I actually love I <laughs> and Yanni. Yes, I fucking love Yanni. Dude, I grew up with Kenny G, so it's. I mean, that's that's in our generation. That's true. So, um, another thing, kind of that's been coming back and actually making a new appearance is drones. Did you see that? Yes. It's insane. And some teenager won it. From England. From England. 250,000. So if you check online, you just see like the drone Grand Prix. And in in this year, it was in Dubai, apparently. They signed on to be there next year as well. Which is crazy. The uh, They're signed on to be like the robotics Olympics. <sighs> so like they're going to have swimming robots and all kinds really? of like. Yeah, yeah. All, I didn't know that. Of, yeah. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. That's nuts. It's it's so cool that they 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 put the glasses on. Right. They, they wear the, the goggles. They have the first person view of their drone. Yeah. As they're like their heads up display. I mean, they're everything. Their sight. It's so cool that that exists, and I'm so happy to be like alive, like in the generation of that. Yeah. It's so cool of that upbringing. It's kind of it's really really cool. I mean, I I was just impressed with some of the DJI drones, you know, that are out there that you can do some really cool. Uh, videography shots but this is like bringing it to a whole nother extreme level extreme racing extreme racing which is awesome it's very cool and like we were talking about lily a few no last yeah. podcast like yeah. that that's cool too right Just, i like i love all the possibilities with with drones in yeah just every kind of way it i'm just, excited to see what's what's coming exactly and i think it's just going to completely keep evolving which is I'm, I'm look i'm excited for that it'll be interesting to see how like the lawmakers continue to blanket deal with stuff right. not very well because right. like for a while it was like a 30 for for DC it was like a 30 mile radius mm-hmm. um you couldn't fly anything right above like 15 feet or something but they just recently finally brought it down to like 10 or 15 miles so oh, okay you know normal suburbs you can fly again but don't you have to have some kind of like FAA regulated license or some sort I- i'm not sure i'm sure which is crazy, uh, but I don't I, know. I get I, it. Yeah, I get it because you you can't not do nothing, right? But just like everything, you know, it becomes a blanket. Yeah, and you're gonna you know piss off people, and <laughs> not wrongfully so, right? But it's hard to deal with 300 million people exactly all at once. So, and and some of these drones are huge because I've seen some pretty big ones. Well, and they go they can go high. Really, I mean, in the flight path, almost. Yep. So, uh, uh, just even small commercial aircraft, which mm-hmm. is it's crazy. Right. So. <coughs> Pardon me. I saw this thing where Goodyear was making these spherical, like magnetic tires. Okay. So, is exactly what you think? Like, they're, I think they're held up by superconductor magnets okay so they're constantly hovering they're never actually like a touch never touching i think so like the center or good your spherical Mm -hmm. spherical tires Mm -hmm. and i see okay the article says it's basically a rubberized bb-8 what from star wars that looks insane spoiler alert (sighs) I think you would know BB-8 by now, especially from just the trailers or something like that. But yeah, you know, it's oh. they're being 3D printed and... What? That looks so cool. And and what I'm looking at right now is a motorcycle. So I'm looking at a motorcycle oh, you are. with these wheels kind of, I don't know, around the cage with these weird, the weird like wheels. A, like a... 
like a, yeah, almost like, like a, a half semicircle type of thing. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That would be cool. That almost reminds me of like, uh, did you ever see the movie I Robot with Will Smith a long time ago? Mm-hmm. Remember the Audi that he drove? Yep. And and it kind of had these four kind of roundish type of wheels, and on the bottom they were like spheres, right? Which is like that. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm seeing as a car here. Yeah. And you could parallel park like a boss. Oh yeah. You know, I'm trying to think what 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 year did did iRobot come out? I feel like that was like probably like oh six or something. Two thousand four. Close. Two thousand four. That's crazy. <clears throat> but I mean, if you look, yeah, it, it almost looks like that technology mm-hmm. that they had in that movie, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Speaking of, that's that's set in 2035, so we need to get moving. We're, we're on our way. <laughs> we got uh, 14 plus 5, 17 years. Yeah. You know? I, I And at the rate things are going, we're just increasing and increasing <laughs> and increasing and increasing. <laughs> Some more new tech that's kind of come out is the 360 cameras. Mm. Is this like the snowboarder guy I saw? That's So that's like a makeshift 360 camera. Okay. So that's like a guy decided to attach his iPhone right. to right. some strings, and he just swung it around while he went down a ski slope it or was whatever. very cool. On a snowboard. Very cool looking. But there, there are a lot of new actual 360 cameras that don't require a string. Well, there you virtual go. Virtual reality capture device. <laughs> um, Samsung has come out with some new kind of. Samsung. Samsung. I've never heard. What's what? I don't. You don't know who Samsung is? Scottish company. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, you see, it <clears throat> it basically it's in, it's crazy. It has like a front and a back, but it it captures it in this ultra wide angle. So it's like the Samsung Global Gear 360, and it, it's 180 degrees of like high resolution detail, but it takes complete 360 video. So like it has a 180 shot, but like the lenses complete like the rest of the view. So it makes you see what I'm saying. It's kind of like a multi dimension. So you have like X and Y. Okay. But then you have like Z. Yes. That it like the circumference. Oh wow, that looks like again BB-8. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's waterproof, dustproof, shockproof. Attaches to your phone. It, it's pretty neat. So, is it essentially like two extreme fisheye lenses? Two that extreme. Connect? Yeah. Interesting. So it's like two extreme fisheye lenses that that like overlap each other almost right so to get a full to get a full 360 view yeah wow which is just crazy that looks cool i gotta hand it to samsung they're um pushing things they are and i don't you've have you heard of the youtuber or just the the movie producer casey neistat Mm -mm. i feel like you you may have seen something of his casey neistat casey neistat n-e-i-s-t-a-t he's really really popular on youtube um samsung for the the what was it what was the recent award show that just kind of came out where leonardo dicaprio just won his uh <laughs> i'm pretty sure he likes leonardo dicaprio he just made a little freudian slip a little freudian slip leonardo dicaprio what, what did he win like his first grammy yeah oscar Grammy's music. <laughs> Shut the hell up. I don't know. Oscar, a Scott and Marie Award. Okay, so he won his first Oscar. But Casey Neistat was given one of these 360 cameras by Samsung in this amazing briefcase that had like a lock on it and everything and a beautiful display case. Uh-huh. But he basically got to take it to the Oscars and, you know, do some video and record a bunch of video. And, and in their letter to Casey, they were like, don't lose this, please. And that's what they said to him in an, like an official letter signed by Samsung. Oh wow! Because it was like the first kind of like, what is it like a test product? What's that called? Like a prototype. Yeah. So it was kind of like a prototype of this product. Right. So, <laughs> as you can imagine, I'm sure he had like sweaty palms, making sure that he didn't lose this. And it, it even said in the letter too, if you watch his video, it says that 
Um, please do not let this out of your sight and do not let any celebrities handle this. So it was like, don't even give it to another celebrity. You are the only one that has to hold on to this, which is crazy. Wow. But I think eventually once he gets it, you know, uploaded or whatever, you can kind of see the quality of what this what this is and kind of the experience it gives right. the viewer. So that's really cool. And, you know, they're doing their like VR Right. Virtual reality gear and stuff like that. So right. kudos to them. Samsung, stepping up your game, guys. Stepping up your game. Uh, What's in the news for Android? Speaking of which, <laughs> a lot of places have the S7 available now. Okay. Uh, I think it's got, I think it's water resistant. Very much so. The S7. Mm-hmm. And S7 Edge. Oh, the, is that by Samsung? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of the most water resistant phones that's ever been like put out. Oh, it is water resistant. Yeah, so people Completely. are like, like putting them, getting them quite wet. Oh, is that is that why I saw a picture of Lil Wayne dumping wine all over a phone? Is that probably one of those phones? Maybe. I think so. <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> and and it was in the picture. It's just like he's hardly wearing any clothes, and it was like this pretty much sums up Lil Wayne, and it's like him <laughs> dumping wine all over a phone. Really? But I didn't know what phone it was. I thought he was destroying it, but I think it's that new Samsung phone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's IP68 rated, which is like... Oh, yeah. Pretty high for devices. I'm looking at a kind of a GIF right now that says, like, Samsung's new S7 is waterproof. So they threw it in a fish tank. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's, there so you go. The phone is portraying a fish tank, and they're putting it inside of a fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of cool. That is cool. I really, this is something that needed to come out like years ago. Yeah. I, it's, well, and I think they're going to, because they're doing this, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm watching a commercial where a guy just baptized someone <laughs> with a pocket, with it in their, their pocket. <laughs> but, uh, I think they're going to, you know, that's what I love about Android and all just even Apple and, and other phone manufacturers, they push each other. Yeah. So this is going to be cool because I think it's going to start becoming mainstream. Right. Which is smart and awesome because... Oh, it's so needed. I mean... Phones, they go everywhere and they fall everywhere. What is that going to say for like the case companies? You know, because I don't know if they're ruggedized for under <laughs> underwater submersion. You know, I, the only one that I really know of that I've had experience with is LifeProof. Like that, that phone case company. I don't know. I, it would be an issue because... You know, you don't want to like hold water, right, between the case and the phone or whatever, because mm -hmm. that's bad, right. And when you bring it up to your ear, you don't want it to leak and shit. <laughs> but um, you know, I don't. I'm, they'll work it out. I'm sure whatever. they will. They always do. But uh, Android N. Android N. N. N as in Nancy. Nancy. Right. November. Oh yes. What is that? Tell me a little bit about that. I have no idea. It's the next release. It's not named yet. They're um, they're gonna release it at Google I/O in the coming months, as we talked about in our first podcast. Right. Um, it's got some cool features though. Um, I'm trying to remember what they are. What 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 was it called before? Like the previous one, Marshmallow M. Marshmallow M. Okay. Yep. This is unnamed as of yet. Unnamed, just Nancy. N. But I mean. I heard that um, in the Google Opinions Reward app, which is an app that you can just answer like surveys for Google, yeah. and they'll give you Google credit to use on the store or whatever. Oh, wow. One of them is, what food word comes to mind when you think of the letter to N? <laughs> so I think they're trying to look for the crowdsourcing <laughs> ideas for N. Hmm. But it's got to be like a dessert. Oh, okay. So, so it has to be a dessert. What do you think? Oh, man, Nutella. Ooh. <laughs> Gotta love my Nutella, the hazelnut. That's a good pull. Good first pull. They'd have to trademark it, though. Exactly, and that's what I'd hate. Because <laughs> before, they did Kit Kat for K. Did they? Yeah, so they had to like oh. go in with Nestle or who the fuck owns Kit Kat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. And I think that would be fabulous for Nutella, though. Nutella. Because Nutella is a fantastic company, and they're global, globally known. And yeah. that would just integrate perfectly. Nutter Butter? Another trademark item. Nutter butter. What's a dessert that's not like a 
a brand. I can't even think of one. <clears throat> N. N. That starts with N. N- nothing hard. nothing comes to mind <laughs> literally nothing hard I'm, I'm curious what all the crowdsourcing <laughs> has come up with that's a lot that's a, I, there's there's not a lot of end desserts if you think you know what here we go Google. think about it desserts that start ah, first search first suggestion with n <laughs> alphabetical listing to start with n oh man nungu dessert nalikai kir nalikai nuts nuts that would be great nut pie even better peanut butter <laughs> noodle jello noodle noodle jello ah here we go here's a, here's a, here's a good one new york cheesecake new york cheesecake new york cheesecake and <laughs> would that literally be the longest name that they've had so far new york cheesecake yes got it but hey <laughs> you know you know anyway i'm curious uh, to see what they go up with it's got multi-window mode natively now like LG and Samsung have had that built into their custom right. ROMs for a while, but mm-hmm. it's native to Android now, and it's it seems to be handled quite nicely. And you know, when you drag down the menu, you have like Wi-Fi and like hot stuff that you use, hot keys or whatever, kind of like frequently. Yeah, used. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can rearrange them now. Oh, cool! You couldn't do that before on the stock Android. Right, 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 right. So basically, a bunch of awesome features that developers and other companies have included on their previous builds and. Right. Put it in stock into Android and then make it better. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's pretty wild. Waze is amazing. Yes. And you finally, you guys finally have the latest version, even though we've had it for forever. There it is. <laughs> On Apple. A little stab in the back. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. How do you like it? It's phenomenal. So much better, huh? It is. It makes yeah. it use like it makes me not embarrassed to use it. I don't know, right. even though I don't know who I was embarrassed to be in front of using it, but yeah, it doesn't look like it's from two thousand seven. You got me hooked on Waze. I think I did. I think you were the one that introduced me to Waze, like when it first came out, or not when it oh. first came out, like originally. Okay, I didn't know that. No, maybe not. I actually don't know because I had it when I was at the Pentagon. Then it wasn't me. No, that was not you. I don't know who introduced. That was Secret it to Agent me. Bob. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's it's totally evolved almost like everything else but mm-hmm. like the app is amazing now well yeah like i was telling you earlier i had my hands on an iphone for work this past summer and i was like what happened with ways this is freaking <laughs> gorgeous like and then i went back to my iphone or my my nexus and it was like the same old shit Right from oh seven, and you're like, why hasn't this changed? And I was online? like, Google bought Waze. Right, Google owns Waze. <laughs> Google owns Android. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> why is it taking so long? But that's the case with many things, like Hangouts as well. So you know, whatever. But right, why is it that it didn't update right away? Why do you think that is? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Especially, I think I think it's a lot easier to code and design for Apple. Okay, because it's basically one or two devices. All right. Right. Or at least not 60 devices. Right. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Because you have flagships for every manufacturer, like top of the line, and you have mid grain, mid mid mm-hmm. ranges, and then like, you know, whatever, bottom ranges. So there's so many phones out there that they have to make sure that it runs on all. True. So I, I'm assuming that's why, you know. Has to make sure it'd be compatible across the board. Right. Okay. But yeah, we have it now, mother trucker. So what? I'm very excited about that. And it's gorgeous. I'm jealous, except I'm not because I've had it for a long time. Well, tell me about your Apple. <laughs> what about it? Well, the Waze app for, for, for starters has been quite amazing. Um, not a plug, not for sponsored. Some, for some time now. <laughs> for some time now. I was I was always curious because like, my Waze app never really cr- – it crashed a little bit. But my roommate, Brian's, his – like it just never worked. It could never get the network for Waze, it seemed like. Does he have a iPhone? No. No, he has some kind of Android something or other. Really? I forget forget what he has. But but it just would never work properly. 
sometimes during like peak rush hours, like the servers can't handle it. Yeah. So it might be part of it. Possibly. But um, speaking of Apple, I just got Amazon is having an amazing deal, like a daily box deal or whatever of Logitech stuff. Shut up. Really? Yeah. Did you not see it? No. Oh, man. It had these cameras on deal. The ones that we're looking into? I And I, I don't know if it's the right number, but uh, yeah, it looked like these. They're like 50 bucks. That's like 20 off. No. Oh, okay. That's not great, but still. I mean, it's better not, than... It's not bad. Yeah. Well, what I got was like this Logitech wireless um, solar powered keyboard, and it has a number pad on it too. And it is Mac Apple compatible. So it has like all the same buttons and keys that you would have on a standard, you know, iMac. Keyboard. Is it is it Bluetooth? Yeah, Bluetooth. Um, no, I'm sorry. It's not Bluetooth. It's done through the US, a USB stick, it's like a wireless. So yeah, Bluetooth through the USB stick. Oh, it's for your like iMac. iMac. Okay. I, c- I could use it on this, this computer, this laptop if I wanted to. Right. Yeah, but, but it's not but for your yeah. phone or no, 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 like no. iPad or whatever. Yeah, it's for like your desktop or your laptop Actual or whatever. workstations. But, but but this keyboard I've seen over the years and it's just kind of gotten better. But now that it has like a number pad, that's something that my iMac was like always missing. And I was kind of like... That's right. I don't want to have to buy... Like the, yeah. Super compact, super basically compact keyboards. ripped off a laptop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, man, if it just had that number pad, but then they came out with these, you know, external number magic pad. pad yeah not magic pad but the number pad 45 dollars or like yeah it was like 45 <laughs> bucks for like this metal aluminum thing and it had like a little attachment thing to attach it to this tiny keyboard i was Ugh. like you know that's not even worth it so like over the years i never got no it. no i mean but, yeah it's not worth it. but this keyboard is pretty neat i i got one for myself and for my stepdad because i know he kind of gets into it it's solar powered yeah that's solar pretty powered. bad it is i like that so even even the light from the the computer will charge it. So what? it's any kind of light. So if you're in the dark and you have your brightness up on your computer, yeah. it'll charge that keyboard. Does it have like the four cells you can cover with your thumb like like the old calculators? No. It has like oh shit, 50 cells across the top. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just like lay your fat lay, like this, yeah. <laughs> then it'll stop working. That's cool. <laughs> but it's it's really really cool. I I'm excited to start using it, which I haven't yet. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just haven't had time to like plug it in and use it. Plus, I don't really use my desktop. But in the case that I do need to to use it, you know, plug in all my taxes and all that junk, adult stuff. Adult stuff. <laughs> Not uh-huh. fun. I I could then have a number pad at my my fingertips. This is a good thing to have. They they make things much easier. <laughs> it's true. They, they I, do. I really do hate when I don't have one. I know. <laughs> It's, I guess that shows how old we are. Or... I guess. Hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about Monument Valley because I still have not played it myself. You should. <laughs> I was told by you. It's uh, it's you know, I think it's like four bucks or whatever, but it's not even like hard or it doesn't make you think very hard or anything. Yeah, just a little bit it does, but it's more of an experience than anything okay that's how i see it for, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about monument valley is an app that you can download on both android and ios mm-hmm. um, and it's like a puzzle type game yeah you play this little girl right and you're in this like fantasy land of like what's um what was that painting where like staircases were upside down and like oh yeah i don't remember the name of that but it was like that surreal world yeah type like thing. And like Harry Potter type thing as well, where things yeah. keep switching and, you know. Yeah. You're in a world that's made up of that kind of stuff. Which is cool. And crows. Crows? Yeah. Like, and like bird crows? Like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a murder of crows. Okay. And um, you make your way through the levels. Hmm. And it's really pretty. And it's it sounds really nice. Like the music is very nice. And right. like, it's almost like zen like it, it makes you really relax. It's really, okay, it's, it's really cool. That was the article that I found that apparently there is like a bunch of games that have amazing soundtracks. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, I don't know, one of those Kung Fury games is probably on that list. Probably. But Monument Valley was like at the top, and it was saying that that was like one of the best soundtracks that you can get. It's been a little while, so I don't remember exactly, but I remember. Gotta get back. I remember that. just not playing, <laughs> just like have just having it up. Oh, and uh, just like, like just like 
listening closing to my it. eyes and like relaxing and listening to it because like it's it's very like zen out right it's very cool it's I like, like it. that there there was a game that so i went to magfest i want to say maybe like a month ago i really should have gone there it was it was awesome it was kind of like my first convention here in the dc area right because i've gone to some in baltimore or similar type things in baltimore mm-hmm. but magfest here was pretty awesome but i went with my roommates and we went to this kind of like showing of the game journey not to be mistaken but it's very similar um atmosphere yeah but the game itself you're like this this being that wearing this kind of like dress drapery cloak cloak type thing mm-hmm. and you're traveling and you're trying to get your scarf which gives you power to fly and to kind of go through the level without dying mm-hmm. and you're trying to gather all these things to kind of unravel what happened in the environment and you go through like a like a history story yeah. along the way yeah along the way but yeah. but the coolest thing was the atmosphere the environment and the soundtrack to it mm-hmm. but at magfest i think i told you it was like the the orchestra the singer the whole entire band from that game was there live playing mm. while while these uh kickstarter backers that yeah. originally backed the, the game uh-huh. were playing it and they would like go through a certain scene and then switch out to another player and then then they just basically play along to the game but it was live that's cool just... i didn't know it was that original sound people i thought they were yeah like doing no it was the original creator of the game and the original creator of the score for that's, the game that's cool yeah that's... so they were like getting autographs and stuff like that after and i think you had to go to some different area but it was it was unreal and i was just like so enamored by this journey that you're taking through and the game is kind of short it is if you think about it's it it's like maybe 4 hours or something i don't know if it was yeah well if you're a completionist yeah yeah if you're complete <laughs> whoops but it was a cool experience so i think that kind of goes along with that monument valley soundtrack exactly that's so that environment yeah. that atmosphere you felt is very same right it's very similar Going from that to the division, the big, division, big boy games. What is the division, Craig? It's a triple A Ubisoft title. Ubisoft. 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 <laughs> I don't know what it is, but <laughs> you know. Anyway, it's Tom Clancy title. Okay. And uh, it's been teased for like just like No Man's Sky for like a few years now. Oh, okay. It's finally out. What's the concept? It's like. I don't know the story, but it's like tactical four-man teams. Okay. And, you know, you each have a class or whatever. And it's just, it's, oh, it's, it's really like, yeah. I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, I think I saw a trailer for it. Mm-hmm. But there's like lots of classes. Okay. Like there's like uh, the good guys and then there's like another version of the good guys that are like, but th- but they're all different. Like there's a bunch of different classes. Yeah. Somebody was taking a picture of like this place in New York or wherever it was mm-hmm. and showing the game and it was like pixel for pixel that's crazy yeah but it's it's like post-apocalyptic right kind of world is it i don't know i think so it's kind of like the world is is fallen and there's now these different groups factions factions that are trying to either destroy the rest of earth and take over like the bad guys or Mm -hmm. there's different versions of the good guys like the police or like where they're they're more about the law that used to exist and then there's kind of like the militaristic ones that are just kind of like you know we take over because we have the most power type of thing oh yeah you're right it says smallpox pandemic yeah okay in manhattan yeah so like there and then there's like the scientists that are trying to cure everyone um i mean there's like tons of that's different cool. classes yeah so yeah it's interesting it's kind of like um that board game uh panda pandemic pandemic or something yeah yeah i think it's pandemic yeah because that's what it's that's what it sounds like in video game form yeah which is cool yeah i think it's a cool idea yeah uh, when does it say it's coming out it did oh it did yeah um wow yeah march 8th okay and uh it sold more than any other Ubisoft game ever. Highly anticipated, obviously, and and I'm sure you guys can let us know what you think about that. Mm-hmm. I, um, if you own it, let us know. I'm curious. Maybe we'll let's play it. Mm. Those magic words. Let's play. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm looking forward to doing something like that. Yeah. I think that'll be really cool. Definitely. And and we've got the equipment for it. At least the starter equipment, starter pack. Yeah. Which is cool. Definitely. I we'll get something going. Yeah. It'll be awesome. What what is this uh 3D nest thing that was, you're in? I was going to ask. Did you yeah. did I show you that? No. So, I didn't see that. So you know like an NES emulator. Mhm. You can like load the ROM and play Nintendo on your computer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one that exists now, um, it like adds a third dimension to like old ass 2D Mario like games. Oh, okay. And if you look up 3D NES emulator, yeah, and click on any of the you know Engadget or whatever the newsfeed sites are, okay, you can see like Mario, oh like wow, under, like underground, yeah, and like it, it has depth. Oh my gosh! And if you keep scrolling, like you Contra and no way, all these like badass old you know classic games are yeah. are given like maybe a second life. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, Contra, for example, this looks epic. Mm-hmm. That looks crazy. Or like Pap- Paperboy. I don't know how the f- hell it works. Yeah, but um. Oh man, it makes it it makes it literally just like three D and and it makes it pop out towards you that's mm-hmm. that's nuts yeah it's really cool even though it's 8-bit right that's cool it must make it must be programmed to like make assumptions based on patterns or something mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know i'm not a programmer but what were some of those games that you sent me that you were playing because i'm looking forward to looking into those again you made like a test video for that galaxy galaxy yep it's pretty cool it's like a space shooter i don't know much about it Okay. But I got it for free on PS Plus. What? Oh yeah, it's pretty cool so far. It's cell shaded, so it's fun to look at. Yeah, I like, like Futurama and games. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And uh, right. Borderlands. Yeah, yeah. Borderlands is like <coughs> a, a perfect example of that. Yeah. Um. Also, one of the Mega Man series games was kind of in that cell shading. Okay. Format. Yeah, it's it's a cool style. Um, haven't gotten much into it, but so far it's pretty cool. And then um. Bro Force. Bro Force. It's great. That that game, I had no idea all these people were playing it. I didn't either. It, I, I, that was another free game, and what a treat. It's so fun. <laughs> it's it's like pretty much 8-bit, but it's hilarious, and, you know, it's we're definitely going to do a Let's Play. Yeah, that. like you were showing me for the game, it like every time you shoot a gun, it like, their I face like <laughs> like change. it's it's awesome or like if they get hit or something i think they're like yeah. or something like that that's mm-hmm. cool and and what i'm what i'm describing is basically in the game it's kind of like flat mm-hmm. right but like you've got your characters that you're playing in the bottom left and right hand side of your screen it's like a little hud little sort of. hud kind of heads up display with like your <clears throat> i guess your your machine gun or your ammo that you have left or whatever your grenades and all that yeah stuff. and and your little animated character in 8-bit form is so cool looking yeah and they're all like i don't i don't want to give it away yeah let's not give it away let's see even it. though i'm sure everybody's seen it already <laughs> but we can have more fun more you know fun stuff to talk about yeah when we're doing a let's play of that definitely but i think it's a good good stopping point for this Episode 003 of JPEG. JJJPEG, peg, peg. But please, we would love to hear your guys' feedback. Yes. Give us, go ahead. Anything. Anything. Anything you need feedback on. We need feedback on comments, criticisms, you know, positive things. Yeah, everything. Because, you know, we want to do this. We want to do this and we want to make sure that you guys uh, are enjoying what you're listening to and watching. We're only going to be improving as we go, and we're still working on the whole YouTube um, kind of like admin, how, stuff. admin stuff. It's a lot of work, and I commend all of you YouTubers out there that put I had a no ton idea. of work. I had no idea. I had idea. no idea. <laughs> it's crazy to me. And they put out like three videos a day. and like I, They've got so much stuff that's automated now that I just I don't get have it. no idea. Yeah, we'll get there. Yes. But please let us know. Give us a like on our video, please. That really helps us out. Um, leave us a comment and subscribe yeah we would love to have as many subscribers as possible and we'll just keep pushing out content as we can as much as we can so thanks for listening everybody my name is Jerry and I'm Greg and this was JPEG we are out